Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a disassembly and maintenance video for you on this guy right here. This is the um, CJRB Kicker pocket knife, and notably, the, the thing that's interesting about this knife, um, honestly, the rest of it is sort of uh, pretty vanilla, um, is this part right here. This is the Artisan, uh, well, Artisan or Rip CJRB, they're the same company, uh, Recoil Lock, which is something interesting. I'm not sure exactly... Uh, you know, what its benefits and the, the, the harms are, so to speak, but it's uh, it, it's different. So I want to take a look at it and see what's going on. From my first impressions, actually, it appears to function a lot like an axis lock style lock, but we will see what's, uh, we'll see what's inside this guy, take it apart. Um, first off, I guess, as I'm taking this apart, in the name of full disclosure, this guy was sent to me by Artisan, uh, uh, well, CJRB, they're the same company, little bit of thread locker in there but nothing too bad so keep that in mind um also let's go ahead and pop this out if you're curious about any of the tools i'm using during this or any other disassembly go to nickshabazz.com slash tools you'll see a full list of everything uh, video describing everything actually uh, i got more than just a list and now we should be able to pop this guy off if this is like an axis lock style knife there will be an omega spring inside here and uh, that will tell us exactly what's going on. So uh, let's see if we can pop this loose. Can we pop this loose? Is there loose popping going on here? What about loose locking? Nope. Why is this not coming off? This scale should lift off happily. In fact, this whole half of the knife should lift off, although actually the whole half of the knife might not lift off because of the lock, which appears to have a piece that's pinching everything in there. But is the liner pinched in there as well? That's a good question. Now I'm just rambling. Stream of consciousness. I wonder. Magnets, how do they work? Actually, I know how magnets work. But that's not what today's video is about. All right. Why is this not... This is a little spudget tool here. question here is why is this damn thing not coming apart uh could just be yeah okay that's all there was some thread locker in there um likely that means that there's also thread locker in between the liner and the uh the liner and the g10 here so as a result things are a little difficult um but i want to get this liner off so i can get a closer look at this lock if it is in fact axis lock style actually okay i tell you what i'm going to treat it like one it won't really hurt me much and i'm going to go ahead and push through the uh i'll push the pivot through i'm going to use this tool that's actually designed for an axis style lock and just push the pivot all the way through there we go that'll let me pull the blade the rest of the way through and that'll get the blade out of play, so to speak, as I'm going ahead and trying to pop this open. Why is this not coming loose is the biggest question on my mind right now. Okay, this... Okay, no, it's... There we go. Where was that? Oh, shoot. So there's this little thing right here, which needs to go inside of this... And there's this little guy right here. Yeah, this is an axis lock style lock. Wait a second. This is exactly... Okay, hold on. Hold the phone. What we have here is the uh, the, the inside of... Good Lord, that's a lot of oil. Did, did I disassemble this? What's what's up with that? Um. Anyways, let's go ahead and pop. Uh, take a closer look here. What we see here is actually that this is exactly functioning like a, an axis style lock. We have an omega style spring right here. The main difference is that on an axis style lock, uh, like, come on, hold on. Uh, let's grab this guy. This is the Benchmade Midi Bug Out. So in an axis style lock, what you have here is the, uh, the, 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 this little bar here is sliding up onto the blade to lock it, and instead you, you touch the edges of the bar to pull it back, or uh, etc. So the lock works in that way. On this knife, though, it is identical, except that there is this carriage here. This little carriage appears to run on these little areas, like on uh, these little pins here, slide in the liners, and this little carriage pulls back the bar itself directly. There appear to be no other differences uh, from the original sliding bar axis style lock, and it's fine. It's an idea that's no longer trademarked, but it seems that, yeah, that's exactly what we have going on here. So this is, functionally speaking, um, okay, aside from that little piece coming out, which again, whatever, 
It's fine. That's held in place by the G10. This is, functionally speaking, going to act a lot like an axis lock. Relying on the Omega Springs and sliding up onto the blade in the same way, because we see here, this is the other thing that kind of tipped me off, is that this little slope here allows the axis style bar to, to slide up along the top there. So basically, this is, all you need to do is, instead of making the bar longer, they made this little carriage on the top of it, which allows it to pull through. Okay, cool. So we got that there. Now, knowing this, I now no longer ever need to do that again. Uh, I, uh, there is absolutely zero reason for me to ever take this knife apart in that way again, because, uh, well, that's not the best way to reassemble and disassemble these knives. So if you are a person who owns this particular pocket knife and you're curious how to take it apart, I mean, you can certainly do that. In fact, you could probably go further. It looks like if I pop out this little pin and this little pin, and then I do the exact same, like I take off the clip, pop out these guys, and then I pop out these pins on the other side, then this little carriage guy at the top will lift off and that'll allow you to get at the axis bar. And then if you take the, the spring out of position, you can slide that down, pull it out. I mean, you can watch some of my uh, disassemblies of some Benchmade style, uh, or Benchmade axis locks, uh, if you're curious about, you know, how to do the full shebang. But you shouldn't need to. 99% of the time when you're taking apart an axis lock, unless you're trying to, like, swap out the scales or the backspacer or something, you can treat the entire thing as if it were an integral knife and it works just fine. An integral knife, of course, being a knife with both parts, uh, where the, the entire handle is one piece of metal. Do I have an integral handy? I do not. All right, whatever. Um, so, uh, well, not immediately on the... <sighs> Hold on. I just remembered I'm like two feet away from my freaking knife chest. This right here is an integral pocket knife. This is the Spydeco Nirvana, where it is a single piece construction. So in this case, obviously, there aren't back screws. Because you don't need to... Well, <laughs> the back is a single piece of metal. It doesn't need to be screwed together, you know? So, uh, yeah. So this whole thing now can be treated as one single element. And I can slide this back and forth. And there we go. A little gritty action there. But whatever. Not the end of the world. I suspect that'll wear in over time as you use the knife more. Very strong springs as well. So, okay, how do I actually take it apart? So let's say, uh, let, let, let's pretend for a second that you just bought this knife and you, well, or ideally you bought this knife, you used it for six months, got it good and dirty, and then decided, oh, I'm going to take this guy apart. How would you do that? Well, first off, you'd do what I started off by doing. Is you'd unscrew the pivot, you'd push it through, you push the pivot through with some kind of a blunt tool, um, and then ultimately you would... Um, well, <laughs> uh, it do end up exactly with what I've got here. The blade is out, and the bearings came with it, and then the, the, the pivot is out. So we can then go ahead and clean things up. By the way, here's another piece of evidence that, and this is how they're managing the uh, detent here, is they've just got this surface here um, that you, you kind of need to pull the axis lock out using the flipper tab. Well, I'm sorry, the locking bar. It's not an axis lock. It's a recoil lock, of course. It's a slightly different thing. But nonetheless, um, you, you have to pull that bar out. So there you go. Um... Interesting. I was curious, you know, and that's the thing. At this point in time, you know, as, as you become sufficiently knife nerdy, and I would probably argue that I am among, certainly I'm in the top percentiles of knife nerdy humans at this point in my life. Uh, but nonetheless, the uh, as you become more and more of that, as you get more familiar with more designs, when somebody drops, drops a new lock, you can often come up with ideas as to how this might be working. And I, I kind of figured that might be something like what's going on here. But um, yeah, this is actually, it's pretty straightforwardly, uh, you know, kind of an adaptation. It's just a different carrier for the for the bolt style thing. I mean, you know, this is, they are far from the first people since the uh, access lock went out of uh, trademark or uh, patent protection or whatever. The legal term is, I forget exactly which kind this got. Um, but, you know, they're not the first people to do it, certainly. But, um, yeah. So let's go ahead and uh, lubricate the bearings here. We use a little bit of 10-weight nano oil. But, uh, yeah, so there are lots of folks who've done it. But, I, you know, and although you could, I guess, kind of consider the Spydeco ball bearing lock to be in a similar vein. Although there they're using a ball bearing rather than a sliding thing. But there they've got another, like a cage, basically, that you're moving uh, rather than moving the item that's doing the locking itself. But, yeah, that seems to be what's going on here. So I've cleaned off the bearings. I have uh, lubricated their path here. And I'll go ahead and I'll rotate the bearings just to make sure that lubrication get spread around. Now what you do is you take the knife and you take the bearings and you just kind of reinsert everything together like this. 
Now, uh, the nice thing about this is that I, uh, well, what I need to do now is to put in the pivot. Is this by any chance the same sizes? Okay. What I'm going to try and do is use this little tool here. This is a tool, uh, okay, no, it's a little bit smaller, but that's okay. Um, and I'm going to use this little tool here to locate everything, get everything ready, and then I'm going to kind of push the pivot through and then pull the recoil lock back. Ah, damn. So I got to pull this back at the same time that I'm pushing the pivot through. And the pivot needs to be aligned such that the D shape is in its proper position. So the pivot is now aligned such, because the pivot, uh, there is a D shape to it. There's a flat portion and there's a flat portion on the pivot itself. So I need to get everything kind of put in there again. And then I'll need to push the pivot through. But in order to get everything seated right, I'm going to need to actually pull back the lock and then force everything through. Okay, good. Did you hear that first snap? That meant I went into this, like I started getting into the blade. Continuing to pull that back and then, up oh, there we go. We're through. Okay. So what just happened there is there was a first snap as it maybe even either got into the bearing cage or got into the first part of the blade. Then there was a second snap as the um, as it got into the blade, and then a third one as it kind of seated itself in the other liner. So there we go. Um, now all I need to do at this point is to... Uh, where is the... Got my thread locker. Let me clean off this pivot real quick. Uh, this pivot screw, that is. Just get some of the old thread locker off there. And then put a little bit of blue Loctite on there. Uh, a little bit more. Not that much more. Got a little enthusiastic there, what can I say? And we will pop this into position here. Making sure, of course, that the pivot collar is properly centered, and the pivot is centered on the collar, and we should be good to go. Now, I have just over-tightened this pivot by an order of magnitude, so let's not do that, shall we? Let's not by an order of magnitude, no. I did not do that. Physicists, I'm sorry. But anyways, um, but it is definitely over-tightened. Okay, there is no blade play here. This does have the advantage, much like an axis style lock, of allowing a relatively free motion when the blade is disengaged. How is the detent? It's a little mushy, but that's the nature of the beast with this kind of thing. Uh, there should be no blade play. Okay, good. There is a little play, actually, from... Yeah, there's a little play when the knife is closed. What I'm thinking I'm going to do here, actually, is I'm going to use a little bit of uh, knife pivot lube, although you could use the nano oil just as easily. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place it right along the back of the blade right here. This will lubricate the travel of that bar a little bit. Hopefully make things slide a little nicer. Maybe make them seat completely is the other thing. Okay. No play. And this is still a little floppy there, but... Because it's on bearings, it has enough resistance that a relatively soft detent, or uh, has so little resistance, relatively soft detent can still get through there. So that's good. You know, honestly, I think we're good to go here. Um, so there you go. That is the, uh, that's the Artisan Cutlery Recoil Lock, uh, specifically here on the CJRB, uh, what the heck do you call it? The Kicker, uh, Recoil Lock Knife. So, okay, what do I think about the knife itself? Um, so far, I don't know. Um, the, uh, it's interesting to see this lock, and it's interesting to see sort of a different implementation of it. Um, uh, one thing I'm noticing is that when you close the knife, the flipper tab comes up and hits you off of this lock, so that's kind of a weird thing, right? Um, but overall, I mean, the knife is, uh, it's a D2 blade, relatively vanilla, reverse tanto sort of profile, a little scimitar -y, a little bit of a hook to it, whatever, not a huge deal. A um, little bit of play there, and similarly, a little bit of play in the, um, when it's in the closed position there. So, you know, keep that in mind, but that shouldn't matter because remember, this little carriage isn't actually the thing doing the lockup. The lockup is completely solid. The carriage is pushing on that little bar instead. So that's interesting. Um, Price-wise, it's $43.95 right now on Blade HQ, looking at their website. Uh, that's not a lot of money, and uh, so that's certainly something. Otherwise, honestly, if it weren't for the lock, this would be a pretty sort of vanilla 
middle of the road sort of knife. Um, I I think the lock is is fine, and uh, it, it look. I mean, the nice thing about it being so very closely related to an existing family of locks is we have a good sense of how it's going to perform, right? You know, it's not like we're going to get majorly surprised by, you know, some element of its... So, you know, in practice, it's a fine lockup mechanism. The design itself is relatively vanilla. It's not that much like... Honestly, the rest of this knife is sort of uninteresting. It just kind of is a life support system for an interesting lock. But, you know, that's okay. Um, It's going to be a fine piece. I'm sure it'll work well for somebody. Uh, you know, D2, solid, no real complaints. I mean... Yeah, so I guess that's kind of my feeling, is like the lock is interesting, although again, it's kind of a variant of an existing thing we've seen before, and the uh, the knife itself is a little bit on the vanilla side, but it's good to see something a little bit different, and you know, spending some time with this guy in everyday carry will give me a better sense as to whether this kind of version of the uh, of a sliding bar lock is going to beat, this kind of version is going to beat other kinds of versions that have existed, you know, in the past, and no doubt will in the future. So anyways, there you go, those are my first impressions, uh, and I hope that this has been interesting to you, and have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.